Good morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Columbus Hillhead Church on this Easter Sunday morning. It's lovely to see you this morning. Good to have you, whether you're a regular or a visitor, and welcome to our all-age service this morning. I've got a little plastic egg in the lectern here, and I'm not sure what the contents of it are. I'm dying to open it up. We do hope that you're able to stay for tea or for coffee or for juice uh, at the service afterwards. And welcome to, if you can't be here in person, but you're joining online as we live stream this service. And wherever you are, we pray that you might know the presence of the risen Christ with you this morning. Now, before we sing our first song this morning, let's affirm together that Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour, is indeed risen from the dead. As you'll see on the, the screen, in just a moment, yes, as you'll see on the screen, uh, I'll say Christ is risen. And I invite you then to respond, he is risen indeed. And I would invite you to do so loudly and enthusiastically at the same time, because this is good news. So Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, great. I saw some fists in the air as well. That's super. Let's worship our risen Lord Jesus in our opening praise. We stand if we're able to sing Jesus, Prince and Saviour, Lord of life who died, Christ the friend of sinners, but then King of endless ages, Jesus lives again. Let's worship God together. We're going to pray together now. Let's all pray. <coughs> Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we thank you 
for the joy and the happiness of this Easter morning. We thank you that we can be glad together that Jesus who died on the cross on Good Friday, he came back to life on the third day. He rose again. And because of that, we have light and we have hope and we have so many good things. We pray that you would be near us as we worship you this morning. We pray that you'd help each one of us to understand something about Easter, whether we're old or, or young. And we pray that the joy of Easter might be very much at the centre of our service this morning. We pray for those that can't be here this morning, and we ask that you would be specially near them where they are just now. We come to say sorry for the wrong things that we do. We come to say sorry for when we don't live the way that you want us to live. We don't think the things or say the things or do the things that you would have us. And we pray that you would forgive us. We thank you that you do that because of Jesus dying on the cross. But we pray too that you would help us to follow you more closely and to obey you more closely. So be with us this morning, we pray, in all that we do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have hidden, not very, not very much hidden, but I've hidden some eggs around the church building this morning, and Cassie has helped me as well. So if you are under the age of 16, <laughs> then would you like to go around, they're, they're just plastic, they're just plastic, these ones. Would you be able to go around the church building and see if you can help me find these eggs? There are 10 of them. And uh, if you're under the age of about five, then you might want to bring a grown up with you as you do that. And if you find an egg, then you come and you put it here at the table at the front of the church. That would just be wonderful. So 10 eggs, they're quite small, they're different colors. Don't open the egg when you find it. We'll open them all in a wee minute. And maybe if you, that, that's, <laughs> That's that's the one that I just hid even more. Because <laughs> that's that's uh, that's just to keep me on my toes this morning. Uh, the, so once you've found what thank you so much, Martin, that's brilliant. Once you've found one, then give a wee rest for others to find one as well. Oh great, Jack, fantastic, super, well done. You can go back to your mum again, that's great. So we've got two eggs. Oh, Bella Marie, thank you. We've got three eggs. Thank you so much. We've got four. Brilliant. Any advance on four? It's going to be a very short service this morning if we've only got four. <laughs> Is that an, oh, that's some more here. Oh, brilliant. Thanks so much. Five and six. That's great. Any more? Any, oh, we've got some more. Great. Oh, oh, here's a haul. That's great. <laughs> Seven and eight and nine. That is just marvellous. And Oh, one more. Hey, thank you. Ten. Ten eggs. Oh, well, I think that deserves a, a clap for, for all of that. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so we've got these ten eggs. That's really well collected. And I'm so glad that you've collected them all because I'll get very confused if, if we don't have them. Well, now, let's see, can we find number one up here? Who can help me find number one? Who wants to come and give me a hand finding number one? Great. Come on up and let's see. Where's number one? Which one is it? Should we bring them all down here? That's maybe easier. Get some more helpers. Can you find number one in here? Yeah. 
brilliant. I've got number one. Let's see what's inside it. Let's see what's inside it. There we go. Do you want to have a wee look? You undo the picture. Well done. Well done, Eva. Oh! So what's this? Can we tell? Yeah, wine and bread. That's right. There's some wine and some bread. That's a picture of up in the screen. That's maybe easier for you to see. Uh, I'm thinking at the back than this wee picture here. Some wine and some bread. So Jesus shared a special meal with his special friends before he went to the cross. And there was some wine at it. And there was some bread. And he, he shared it round and he broke the, the, the bread up and he, he gave them all some wine and he said, that's what's going to happen to me. I'm going to, my, my, my body's going to be broken up and my blood's going to be poured out and I'm going to, I'm going to die on a cross for you. He said that, had that special meal that he shared with them. And that's the first thing that I want to share with you, that Jesus knew that uh, he was going to die on the cross and it was all part of God's special plan. Now, what about number two? Oh, good. <laughs> Someone's ahead of the game here. <laughs> Great, Ellis. Now, here we are. Number two. Would you like to open this one? See, what's, see what the picture is. think that is? Flowers. Flowers. Yeah. Flowers. Lovely flowers. Yeah. Now where do we get flowers? Yeah. In a garden. That's right. We get flowers in a garden. So after that special meal that Jesus shared with his special friends, he went out into the garden, a special garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And he knew that what he was going to do was going to be really very hard. So he prayed to God in that garden for help for what was going to happen. Now we have a number three. <laughs> there we go. And I suspect, I think someone else should get in early for number four. <laughs> Theo, I would make a, a beeline for here for, for number four. Well, maybe, maybe you could pass it back to Theo. Yeah. Okay, so here's number three, and I'd like to, do you want to open Martin. this one? I'll give it to Martin. Just give it to someone. Okay, Martin, you open this one. Now, this one's tricky. This one's tricky to work out. Tunnel? Does it look like a tunnel? Yeah. What about anyone, anyone at the back? Anyone? Let's, let's give the grown-ups a chance. Money. That's right. It's, it's, it's silver coins. It's a wee bit tricky to make out from that picture. Uh, that's, that's right. There's, there's, there was money. Now, one of Jesus, we thought it was one of his friends. His name was, was Judas. One of his um, so-called friends had agreed that if he was given some money, 30 pieces, 30 silver coins, that he would tell Jesus' enemies where he was at a time when there weren't lots of other people around. So that was sad to hear about that, but that's what happened. And that happened in that garden of Gethsemane that we were thinking about. Now, where's number four? Where is number four? We've got number four down here, haven't we? A bit of, it's a bit of rope, that's right, that's right. It's a bit of rope. So after Jesus had finished praying to God and after his enemies came to, they came to arrest him and they, they took him away. So they, they, they would have tied him, tied him up and taken him away. And that was sad to see that as well. Now, who has got number five? <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well done, well done, well done. Do you want to open number five? In fact, I'll give you, a, I'll open it because they're very hard. They're <laughs> really hard to open these. There we go. You tell me what's, what's there. It's quite, yeah, that's, now that's maybe quite hard if you're little. Anyone know what that? It's a question mark. It's a question mark, that's right. 
So Jesus was taken and he was taken away and he was asked lots and lots of questions. He was, he was taken before the Roman boss, whose name was Pilate, the Roman governor, Pilate. And uh, Pilate had to make decisions about what would happen to Jesus. So he asked Jesus lots of questions. And, and Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. And he, asked, he decided to ask the, the crowd a question. He decided to ask the crowd if he should let Jesus go free or not. I think he was maybe thinking the crowd would say, we'll let Jesus go free. But uh, the crowd said no. The crowd said no. And uh, so Jesus was taken away. Now, number six. Oh, we're getting a bit of sharing. That's good. Number six. Now this is this is sad. So number six. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's all right. We'll get it next Easter. There's um, there's two things here. Now one of them. What colour is that? Can you see? Purple. That's right. It's purple. So they 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 put a, a kind of purple robe on Jesus. But really they were being cruel. They were being unkind. They were saying, you're very special, Jesus, but they, they didn't mean it. And they put a, a nasty, jaggy crown on his head as well. And they were unkind to Jesus. And then they took him away to put him on the cross. Now, if we get number seven, who's gets here? <laughs> you are quick off the mark. Number seven. Okay, do you want to look over? There we go. So what's that? Don't know. Don't know. What kind of shape is it? Um, don't know. Sorry, do you think an older one can help you out? Do you think your big sister can help you out? <laughs> it's a... Um, what is it? What do you think? A cross. A cross, that's right. It's a cross. It's a cross and there's a picture of the cross on, on a screen as well. So. The soldiers made Jesus carry his, his own cross and people followed and then he was put on the cross and there were two um, thieves, two robbers on either side of him. And you know the amazing thing is though, even as Jesus was put on the cross, he prayed to God and he asked God to forgive the people that were putting him there because they didn't really know what it was that they were doing. Well, we're doing well. We're on to number eight here. We're on to number eight. Who have we got number eight? Well, oh, well done. Here we go. Now, do you want to open that one up? Here we go. Okay, thank you. Now, these are... There's a special name for these things that, yeah. Speech bubbles. Speech bubbles. Wow. <laughs> Who needs grown-ups? <laughs> speech bubbles. That's right. You sometimes get speech bubbles in comics, don't you? And uh, they, 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 they they tell you what a, what a character is about to say, what the what the, um, the the person's about to say. Well, there are some speech bubbles. Well, there were lots of people came to watch what was was happening and one of the things that they said was I'm going to read it if you really are the son of God why don't you come down from there and save yourself they were saying that to Jesus people in the crowd were saying that while he was on the cross but then Jesus in time he died on the cross and then a Roman centurion now how many soldiers do you think a Roman centurion is in charge of yeah? 100. 100, that's right. Really important man, charge of 100 soldiers. Well, he had seen a few things in his life. And when he saw how Jesus died on the cross, he said, this man really was God's son. He wasn't pretending. He really was God's son. Now, have we got two eggs left? Good, that's great. I'm glad we've got two left. That, that's, uh, that gives us hope that we're going to finish in the right place. Uh, let's find number nine, Martin. Here we are. 
Number nine. Okay. What is in here? A rock. A rock. It's a rock. That's right. A rock or a stone. Now, why might we th have a be thinking of a rock or a stone um, on Easter, Ellis? Because that, the boulder moved on Easter. Yes, the boulder moved on Easter, that's right. The, in front of the stone, it moved on Easter and the, 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 um, the angels came to roll the stone away. And when the disciples went inside, they found that Jesus wasn't there anymore. And uh, that was just wonderful. And uh, last egg of all, now... Oh, it's empty. It's empty. If we... You know what that stands for? What does that stand for? Few. Few. That's right. I thought I'd made a mistake there. <laughs> so it's an empty egg. There's nothing in it at all. And that stands for Jesus not being there at all, which was really, really wonderful. It's the good news that even though Jesus had died on the cross and he'd really died and been put in that tomb, he wasn't there any longer. And I think that was that is wonderful news. Thank you so much to all their helpers. Haven't they done a brilliant job? Well, we're going to sing again together, and uh, why don't you go and have um, find a, another wee seat? Uh, that's brilliant. We're going to sing together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving. Thank you for loving me. Let's sing together. Thank you, Jesus. And if we can, we'll stand up to sing. Now, can I just pass on uh, a few notices? Um, first of all, some sad news on this Easter Sunday, which is, as, as some of you will know already, that Margaret Sterling, one of our older members, died a week past on Thursday. I was unaware of that when I laid the service last Sunday morning. Uh, otherwise, I would certainly have announced it. As I mentioned at the midweek service this week, Margaret's funeral has already taken place, and that was on Thursday of this last week. And we remember Margaret's family in our thoughts and in our prayers at this time, that they might know God's comfort and his blessing. 
Can I say a, a huge thank you to everyone that helped uh, in whatever way with the Easter cafe yesterday. It was great to see that so well supported. Thank you to Cassie for putting together uh, so much of the children's programme. Thank you to Vicky for organising refreshments. Thank you to everyone that was involved in that way, in that day, in whatever way. Uh, we have a service this evening that is at the Hillhead Halls, and that is an Easter Songs of Praise. It will be at 6.30 p.m., and all are very warmly welcome to that evening of singing Easter songs with some Bible readings in between. And we meet for worship next Sunday morning, as usual, at 10.30. Looking forward to the week ahead, most of our regular activities are, are not on, but Easter Holiday Club, the restoration station, is on, and that is at the Hillhead Halls from Wednesday to Friday of this coming week in the afternoons. We're running that in partnership with Kirkintillich Baptist Church. It's for primary aged children. We've had uh, quite a good response so far, but there are still places left. So if you have children in your wider circle of family or friends, please let them know about Easter Holiday Club and encourage them to sign up online and speak to Cassie for more details of how to do that. Warm Welcome is on this Wednesday afternoon. Uh, that will be running though out of the, the car park. Uh, I think like the trains, it will be a restricted service, uh, as you sometimes have, but Kitchen Covered will still be there. And I think we're hoping to do tea and coffee uh, still uh, from the car park, if that is, is possible. And on Thursday, Walk and Talk is running as usual as well. And Walk and Talk meets at the Strathkelvin Railway Path at the Kilsyth Road end of that, if you can visualise where that is. If you can't, then speak to someone else that can visualise it better and they will point you in the right direction. If I can also mention, there are copies of the April Prayer Diary available today at the door. Also copies of a short book, uh, Your Verdict on the Empty Tomb, there through at the door and also in the halls afterwards. Do take that, uh, it's free of charge. And finally, thank you so much to everyone who donated Easter eggs to the Lodging House Mission Appeal. We didn't get a final number on the Easter eggs, but it looked a fairly sizable pile that Carol and Alison took to the Lodging House Mission to thank you to everyone who contributed to that. Well, we're going to pray now. We're going to thank God we can celebrate Easter this morning. We're going to pray that he helps us share the good news that Jesus is alive and we'll pray for people that have different needs this morning. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can celebrate Easter this morning. We thank you for sending your son Jesus into the world. We thank you for how he died on the cross so that as we believe in him, you forgive our sins, the wrong things that we do, and you make it right between you and us. We thank you that Jesus rose from the grave, that the grave was empty, as we've just been thinking about. And we thank you that Jesus is alive today. We pray that you'd help us not to keep this good news to ourselves. Help us to spread the news of, of your love and that Jesus is alive. Help us to spread that news with our friends and with our family and those we meet day by day, that they too might know the joy and the wonder of Easter. We pray for Easter Holiday Club this week at the Hillhead Halls, the Restoration Station. We thank you for all those that have signed up and we pray that even more might do so in the next day or two. We pray that Holiday Club would be enjoyed by all with the games and activities and everything else that's going on. And we thank you too that there'll be the, the chance to hear about the good news of Jesus being alive at Holiday Club as well. And we pray that you'd help everyone there to understand that. We pray for those helping. We pray for these, those going, and we pray that it would be a good and safe and happy time together. We pray for all those this morning with 
different needs. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and we ask that you might be very specially near them this morning and that they might know your comfort and they might know your peace, your coming alongside them. We pray for those in the world in various places that are caught up in conflict and war. We pray for peace and we pray that you would help all those that are working towards peace. We pray for all those on this Easter Sunday that are separated from family and friends. Help them when they feel lonely. May they know you close by them. We pray for all those in hospital today. We pray for the teams that are looking after them. Please give them skill and compassion. And please may they know that you're with them, even in a place that is unfamiliar. We pray for those that have difficulty getting out of their houses. And we ask that you would provide what they need from day to day. Help them to trust in you. We pray for those that are fearful for the future. We pray that you would calm their fears as you did for your disciples on that first Easter Sunday morning and on the days after. And we pray too that you would accept and receive the gifts that we bring today and give in other ways for the building up of your church and the spreading of the good news about Jesus here and elsewhere. Please use them as you know best. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, our Saviour, who is alive today. Amen. Now, it's great to have Sunday Club with us this morning. And I thought it would be good for us to, this morning, have one of the songs that Sunday Club sometimes sing when they are meeting through in the large hall. Sunday Club sing our songs. So I thought it would be good for us to um, hear one of Sunday Club's songs this morning. It's all about God's love, which is a great theme for a song. And it begins, God's love is bigger. What's the biggest thing that you can think of when you're eight years old? God's love is bigger than a burger. So we're just going to stay seated. Well, we've got this song on, and if you feel that you're getting to know the tune, then feel free to join in, and otherwise, just, have we, have we got some actions? Oh, we've got some actions. We've got some actions? Oh, we've got some actions coming. You're going to get, this is a, a multimedia experience here. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Right, let's say, uh, let's enjoy. I think we're still going to stay seated, but uh, yeah, yeah, we'll stay seated and you can, you can help us here because it's going to take folks a wee bit just to get the hang of this. And uh, let's say, uh, we'll, we'll do this another Sunday as well, but this will get us started. And this is God's love is bigger than a burger. God's love is bigger than a burger and it's bigger than a mouse Bigger than an elephant and bigger than a house Bigger than a bus and bigger than a tree Bigger than a mountain, bigger than the sea What about a cloud? Bigger. What about the sky? Bigger. What about the earth? Bigger. What about the moon? Bigger. What about the sun? Bigger. What about the stars? Bigger. Is there anything bigger than this big love? Uh, no.
thanks so much. And uh, we're, we're on notice that we're going to be singing that together before too long. <laughs> so that's your, uh, that's your introduction to it. I'm being kind uh, to you this morning. God's love is bigger than the biggest thing that we can imagine together. We're going to have a Bible reading together. This is from Matthew chapter 28. It's verses 1 to 11. It's all about what happened on that first Easter morning. Usually we put the words on the screen, but this morning we're going to put the pictures on the screen for that. So this is Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 11. And this is from the New International Reader's Version of the Bible. The Sabbath day was now over. It was dawn on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a powerful earthquake. The angel of the Lord came down from heaven. The angel went to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. His body shone like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. Come and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly. Tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb. They were afraid, but they were filled with joy. They ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. That's God's word from Matthew's gospel, chapter 28. We're going to sing about that first Easter morning now. And we're going to sing together, see what a morning gloriously bright. It's a bright morning this morning. It was bright because Jesus had risen that morning with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem, folded the grave clothes, tomb filled with light as the angels announce Christ is risen. Let's sing together. We'll stand to sing.
Well, Jesus rising from the dead on Easter morning came as a surprise to lots of people. It, it shouldn't have come as a surprise to his special friends, the disciples, because he had told them that's what would happen. But even so, they hadn't really taken it in. And I'd like to play a bit of video now. It's from the Bible Society and it's called The Awesome Easter Surprise. Is Easter about all those chocolate eggs we give in this wonderful season? There's no doubt they are a treat, but it's not what we eat that's important. And here is the reason. Though chocolate eggs are all very fine, for 2,000 Easter's gone by, it's the stories of Jesus that people have told. How he died, but God raised him on high. For one day long ago, the saddest of days, wicked people put Jesus to death, and he died for your sins, and for mine, and for all. And he loved till his very last breath. On that first Easter morning, all full of tears, came the women, their bags full of spices to lay on his body. But there at the tomb were two angels, all full of surprises. He's not here, he is risen, said the two shining ones. He's alive again, raised from the dead. So they rushed off to tell all the other disciples all the angels had said. You're joking, said most of them. That sort of thing doesn't happen, as well you should know. But Peter and John ran straight off to the tomb, as fast as they ever could go. I wonder what we'll find inside, they were thinking, and wondering if they would dare to poke their heads in there. But when they arrived, it was true, there was nobody there. The women were right, Jesus was alive, and over the next 40 days, they met him again and again, and he taught them more of his wonderful ways. When two of them walked on the road to Emmaus, so sad, because they thought he was dead, he walked and he talked with them, joined in their meal, and they knew him when he broke the bread. When one of his followers doubted, he said, come here. Touch my hand and my side. And Thomas soon realized he wasn't a ghost. My Lord and my God, he replied. And when the disciples went out on their boat, they didn't catch all they could wish. A mysterious stranger stood on the shore and gave them a net full of fish. It's the Lord, exclaimed Peter and leapt overboard. The waters closed over his head but he and the others got safely to Jesus. Come and have breakfast, he said. So, Easter's much more than a chocolate egg, though chocolate eggs are just fine. It tells us of Jesus who rose from the grave and forgives all our sins, yours and mine. And he walks with us today as we go on our way and still calls us from the shore because Easter is every day here in our hearts and Jesus lives forevermore. Well, we've heard lots about what happened on that first Easter and I'd just like to say two things about how Jesus dying and his rising again matters to us today. Easter isn't just remembering something that happened a long time ago. Just like the video was saying there at the end, our lives are to be changed by Jesus dying and rising again. Easter is for every day today. I've just got two Bible verses to share with you. Here's the first. It's one that I think many of us will, will know without having to read it on the screen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's from John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 16. We've seen already how it was God's plan for Jesus to die 
on the cross. And God's giving of his son Jesus, as we read about here in in John 3.16, it's not just about God sending his son as a baby. That's part of God's giving his son. But part of God's giving also is his sending Jesus then to die on a cross. Now, none of us lives exactly the way that God would have us live. And we fall a long way short of living as God would have us live. We don't always do what God says. We don't always obey his commands. And because of that, we need God to forgive us. On the cross, Jesus took the punishment that we deserve for not living the way that God calls us to live. And he did that so that if we put our trust in him, God forgives our sin and we can then be with him forever. And that's why it matters today that Jesus died on the cross all those years ago. But it also matters for all of us that Jesus came alive again. And this isn't even a whole Bible verse. This is part of a Bible verse that I have on the screen here. This is from Paul's letter to Galatia, the churches in Galatia, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And he says to the Christians there, it is no longer I who live, but Christ, that's Jesus, who lives in me. Jesus lives within me. When we believe in Jesus and when we receive God's forgiveness and God is then with us always, something changes inside us. Now that Jesus lives in us, that can be hard to understand. How does Jesus live inside us? What it means is that we have his help inside us. We have his power inside us. We have his love inside us. And in an amazing way, we have his life inside us to live our lives day by day. And that's only possible because on the first Easter, Jesus came alive again, never to die again. And because Jesus lives again, we know that there's nothing that we can ever face that Jesus' power and Jesus' help and Jesus' love won't be enough to help us with it. And that is a marvelous, marvelous thing. So we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Day, but we celebrate the difference that it makes in our lives today when we trust in him. Well, we're going to hear from the singing group now, and the singing group are going to pick up on that, because singing group, if you're in the singing group, please come (laughs) forward. Uh, We're going to sing a song called Because He Lives. Because Jesus rose from the grave, from the dead, I can face tomorrow. And uh, so if you're in the sing group, please come out to the front. And uh, then after that, we will all sing our final hymn together.
thank you very much to the singing group there for singing Because He Lives and soon and very soon we're going to see the King. We're going to close our service now by singing together a great Easter hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun, endless is the victory thou or death has won. A victory that is not just for 2,000 years ago, a victory that is for now and a victory that is forever. Let's sing together, Thine be the glory. May the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this Easter day and always. Amen.